physical street that abuts his lot. So staff suggest, and I guess uh, has stated, that the front of this parcel is on Magnolia. The consequence of uh, this long uh, expanse, over 400 feet, being treated as the front should be obvious. I mean, traditionally when we look at lots, the narrow dimension of a rectangular lot, assuming it's got frontage on some access, is treated as the front. In this case, although Lake Avenue is gone, there is a servitude that abuts the parcel that the Costa zone that runs across the northern portion. So Magnolia is not the only access, although the only public street that's constructed that abuts this track is again at Magnolia on the east side. The consequence of that as it relates to setbacks would be to establish a front setback of 50 feet along Magnolia, a rear setback of 25 feet near the western boundary, and as a practical matter based on the due diligence of his architect, it only leaves a buildable envelope between those setbacks of about 34 feet. So you can imagine the constraints that it places on building what will be a seven figure plus home uh, on this very nice piece of real estate. So the Costas did some due diligence and I hopefully you will appreciate and respect what they did. They not only took a look at the other homes in the area to see what many, I didn't say all, but what many of them had as setbacks and found that many of them had setbacks that appeared to be approximately 15 feet from the east and west sidelines of their lot. But the Costas also went out, they reached out to their soon to be or future neighbors, knocked on doors, got letters of no objection, which should be in your packet, at least three of which are there, but spoke with as many as seven of the neighbors, some of which are here uh, this afternoon, uh, to make sure that they not only introduced themselves, but said, look, this is what we're hoping to do. We've consulted with Jeff Shane. He's advised that if we want to seek a variance from what staff believes to be the front and rear setback, we have to go to the Board of Adjustment. So the good news is, is that to our knowledge, we know of no one in the neighborhood that is opposed to the grant of the variance. And I'm not suggesting that that's the uh, critical criteria for you in making a determination, but I do think it's important to know that uh, the history of the lot in Lewisburg, how it was laid out, where's Lake Avenue, the history that there have been structures on this parcel through the years that fronted on Lake Pontchartrain, so that this is not the first structure that will ever be built there. The history, and, and I guess present history, if you will, of looking at the beautiful homes in that area, many of which front the lake and many or most of which have side setbacks that are similar to what we seek today. Now, a couple other things that I think you should be aware of. Our hope is to have a singular access to the home from the servitude that abuts it along the north. So we don't intend to have a driveway that connects to Magnolia. The other thing that's in my letter, and hopefully you have seen on the drawings, is that we hope to orient the home in a manner that will absolutely preserve and um, I guess accentuate three beautiful oaks that are on the property. And in that regard, we have suggested that we will maintain a 100 foot setback from the lake. Again, the idea is front the house toward the lake, have this deep setback, obviously have reasonable and consistent side setbacks with our neighbors, access the property from the north to the servitude that runs along the north side of, of this portion of lot 15, not place any direct traffic on Magnolia, of course, all of these properties feed into Copal, which is the east-west artery uh, that takes you out to, uh, to North Causeway Boulevard. So um, hopefully I have uh, suggested and painted a picture to you that would justify a grant uh, of the, if you continue to refer to it as a front and rear setback, a variance that would reduce both the front and rear setback to 15 feet. 
Um, I think that is really the sum of my initial comments. I, I'd certainly like to maybe have an opportunity to come to the podium again if others make comments that I think require some clarification or certainly if any of you have questions for me. But I appreciate your time and attention and hope that uh, you will consider our request and see fit to grant the variance to us. Okay. Thank you. I know we have some other uh, people in the audience that may like to speak. At this time, I'll give the opportunity if anyone wants to come up and speak for or against this. Just come up to the podium is, and please state your name and address for the records, please. Uh, my name is Richard Polchow. Uh, I am a neighbor. I live at 140 Magnolia, which is the property directly to the north of this subject property. And I've uh, been living there since 1991, and um, I'm delighted that finally we're going to have somebody possibly living on the lake. There's been just a lot of, um, it's been a vacant lot, so it's good, it's good that I, 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 I'm delighted to hear this. However, I, I, I do have some reservations about the, uh, the setbacks, personally. Um, um, one of the things that defines Lewisburg is its, its natural beauty, its uh, scenic qualities. I know, that, I know they wish to honor those. However, if you grant such a narrow setback, it will consequentially probably require the lot next to it with the only 15 foot setback. So you'll have a, a row of homes that are essentially 30 feet apart all along the front of Lake Pontchartrain. And I don't think that's really uh, would honor and really do justice to the beauty of, of Lewisburg. And uh, frankly, well, you know, I, I believe he can accommodate his needs. I understand I understand the long rectangular nature of this lot, but perhaps restricting the setbacks a little bit, tightening up maybe 20 feet, 25 feet, instead of uh, the way he, he has configured it, also maybe aligning the house in a different way. Um, but um, I am worried about just the, the density that's gonna be created by um, uh, having houses uh, strung next to each other that are only 30 feet apart in an area where that just doesn't exist. These are large homes. They're, they, they're built to scale to the lots. This, this lot is narrow, it's skinny. Uh, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to buy the adjoining lot, so my lot is two widths wide, and I have a, be, I'm able to um, have a house that's oriented uh, in a wider footpath. But the nature of this lot is such that it just requires a, may, maybe a house that faces Magnolia and not the lake, or just a narrower configuration. But I'm, I'm just afraid that uh, this, this is gonna create a, just a, a, a block row of homes along the lake that, that will hinder the, um, the aesthetic appeal of, of the neighborhood. I have one question. You said you live in, you have lot number 17, is that? I have lot 17B, the current one just to the north of it. I don't see today. Well, it, it was rezoned. Uh, it, it was actually 15 and 16 that was directly north of it and part okay. of Lot 17. So 140 Magnolia Street. So you own Lot 17 also that I see on this plot? Um, I own actually Lot 17B. So 17 must have been divided up yes, also. Yes, it was re-subdivided when Mr. Davey subdivided his lot a few years ago. So um, I had mine resurveyed to include a par portion of his that he was selling off, about 0.83 acres. So I originally had lots 15 and uh, 16 north-south. Okay, I'm just, I'm, and the only question I have, I've shown lot 17 going all the way from Copal all the way to the lake on my particular drawing. It doesn't well, show it being divided. I've got a... This, this, is, just a, this is just a zoning map. If you look at the next, if you look at the survey. I don't think I have that. Yeah, they show 17 on the survey, just being adjoining. Oh, I see, okay, so 17 is, uh, is it this one here? Mm -hmm. I'd like to, if you'd like this copy of this. Well, I think she's, is that the one? Is this the lot he has and this is 17? No, 17 is on, look, it says 17 right there. See, it says 17 oh. on the far left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's his lot. But he owns just the, the north portion of 17. 
No, you own the front on the lake, correct? No, I, I have the lot directly yes, north sir. of this lot. So there is a, a lot behind yours that goes to the lake, correct? 17, A there or is. B. You don't mind if I just uh, tell them that they have this one? Yeah. You don't mind if I suggest to them where you're here, right? Yes. Okay. So if you have the Bono survey mm -hmm. um, in your packet? Yes. Okay. This portion of lot 15 is the subject property that we're discussing. You'll see a servitude on the north side. This gentleman owns these two parcels, yes. which have been resubdivided into lot 17B. Exactly. I just wanted to help him with the orientation. Yes. Sir. So the common alley is no longer. It's still there. Yes, sir. It's still it's there. there, and that's the alley that we would make access from to our home. Off of Magnolia. The alley comes off of Magnolia, and we turn and south off the alley. And, and just for clear, that alley is common to both north and south. That is correct. So anyone can use that to access their property. Okay, anything? I'm sorry, so I just wanted to get some of that straight so I know what I was looking at on this map. Uh, we have some questions. I see some people have questions. Uh, I don't know if we want to let the other people speak now, Mr. Snyder. No, no, go ahead. Do you have anything else to add, sir? No. Uh, is this, I saw some other hands, some other one, someone else may like to speak for or against? Uh, thank you, sir. Mr. Shane, I'll give you uh, time to rebut. Well, I certainly uh, respect the gentleman's comments. Um, my client had reached out to him for months. I believe the gentleman was in North Carolina maybe at the time he was reaching out to them. And I'm sorry, I don't think they've ever talked. Uh, we have not. I, I, but anyway, that, that doesn't mean that they didn't try and that we don't hear what they're saying and understand and respect that. Um, I, I think that, um, I guess it's subjective. It's a matter of opinion. But again, their property is to the north of that drive. If they were to the west and abutting this property, I would better understand their concern. But again, the 15-foot setback, I think, is reasonable when you look. This is a very narrow and deep lot, if you will. And it's just almost inconceivable to think of a 50 and 25-foot front and rear setback and, and forcing the house to front on Magnolia when my client is wants but is willing to front it on the lake with a hundred foot setback, which I think is a, a significant, certainly it's for their benefit, but also it creates the view corridor for the adjoining properties as well. We're trying to create some symmetry and, and be consistent with the theme of, of these nice homes uh, in Lewisburg. Um, the final design of, of uh, my client's home is not, has not been perfected, but they obviously had ideas when they bought the lot. And that's how we came up with the idea of 15 and 15. I don't think uh, granting uh, a variance for this parcel is suggestive that this is going to become the template are the standard for all undeveloped lots in Lewisburg. I would hope that this board, as I've seen you do for the many years I've come before you, you look at each of these cases on an individual basis. So I think that some of the difference makers in this request is that we have a public servitude or alleyway to the north side. We don't have to front on Magnolia. We know that the subdivision plat had a history of Lake Avenue, and that really was the historical, and I think one could argue is still the front of the lot, although I realize that, again, Lake is long gone uh, in terms of being above, above ground. But last but not least, there are other homes in the Lewisburg area south of Copal that have setbacks that are similar to these, and I don't believe that it's created an eyesore or been a disruption or create density to the point that it's untenable. So uh, we intend, want and intend to be a good neighbor, but again, would respectfully request that you consider granting us uh, a variance that would allow 15-foot setbacks inside of each 
east and west sideline. I have just one a uh, couple questions. Just so I understand, the house will be facing the lake? Yes. And that, that little jut off, that's not a garage coming off that L, the little, that's like a bedroom or something? On, on the, oh, that, the yeah, footprint. that was just a conceptual uh, on the sketch. Yes. Yeah. So that's not a dry, That's not a garage. Or, no. No. It's just, no. It's just a general idea. Just a general idea. So you would come in off the alleyway, and the driveway would come straight. And you would back. go south into the rear okay. of the residence, which we think makes a lot of sense as well, mm -hmm. as opposed to having a side load or a, a front load, really, if the house fronts on Magnolia. Let me ask Steph, what is the, if it was facing the lake and the, if there was a road, what would be the, the side yard setbacks in Lewisburg? It would be 15 on each side. 15 on each side. I'm sorry. She said 15 on each side. I just want to clarify yeah. if, that's, if, if the, there was a road, if it was coming off a of copal, what would be the, the yes. side yard setbacks? Okay, we have a couple of people have questions. I don't know, you can step, I don't know if it's Mr. Shane or the other John. Uh, Mr. Snyder? You got to hit your there we go. Okay. Yeah, I just <laughs> want to make a couple of things, maybe some questions. It appears to me that all the properties uh, in Lewisburg that have lake frontage, uh, the homes face the lake, or at least the front door, the front of the house faces the lake. Uh, I'm also aware of the special exemption for all uh, waterfront property in Lewisburg uh, for development and uh, which is uh, exclusive to uh, the entire North Shore, uh, limited to just Lewisburg. Um, the 15 foot on the west, I think, is a non-issue because the original uh, lot 17 is, cannot be built on. Uh, it looks to be about 30 feet deep, unless you allowed a trailer in the middle of it. And um, the 15 foot off of Magnolia, um, but the access is going to be from Copal, is that correct? Or Magnolia down to that 25 foot? Uh, correct, to that alley. You would, you would go uh, west on Copal, <clears throat> turn south on Magnolia, then go west on that 25 foot common, it says on the Bono survey, it refers to it as a common use alley. Is it uh, paved, common use alley? I don't think so. It's gravel. No. And is that is it dedicated? Yes. Okay. It's a public. Right it away. is a public right of way. Okay. I believe it is. No. It's, it's not. What is it then? No, it's a private right of way. It's private. It's private. private maybe for it's, who? Maybe it was just a servitude created on the Lewisburg plat for the abutting landowners the, and not the dedicated to the parish. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Does the deed give him access through that servitude? Yes, so. it does. Okay. <clears throat> wait, wait, if you want to speak, ma'am, you can come to the mic and I'll yeah, give you the opportunity to speak. As far as the uh, setback distance to the lake, certainly, uh, it's in, from what I can see, that has always changed and always will change. Because uh, there's no bulkhead there, is that correct? That's correct. Yes. So that's that correct. setback distance... Uh, wherever the property line may be out in the lake now is not even shown here, I don't think. That's correct. Well, yeah, well, it says water's edge, but that's an old um, old survey. Yabono yeah, attempted to show what would have been the uh, footprint of the lot, right. albeit partially in the lake. Okay. Yeah, yes, ma'am. I'll give you the opportunity. Yes, well, well, well part first, please state your name. I'm and adjust. Victoria Polchow, 140 Magnolia. Yes, ma'am. That ma servitude, that there was a lot of discussion with Mr. Davey when he divided these lots, that that's the access down the middle of the block between Copal and the lake. There are, how many lots? Four? Five? Four. Four. There are four lots that are owned by people who can only access those lots through that servitude. So that they, to go down to the middle to get to their lots. There are no houses there yet, but they've been staked off. So that it's, it's access for those people and also the people on Copal to come down for utilities. But that access will go how far down? 
it would go past that lot 17 or, or? How far did it go? Yes. yes. It goes a couple hundred feet, I, I think it goes through the, I think it goes through the middle of the block and then down the center. Because when we subdivided that lot with Mr. Davey, that 17B, part of that has a drainage canal that he was forced to build because he was flooding the neighbors with his fill. So and what lot part, was that one? The 17 um, B. So we, we don't have, I don't think I have 17. Okay, Mine's not well, showing 17 B or A. The, or. the 17 ran from Copal to the lake, and it was divided into A, B, and C. So 17 we, was divided into three parcels, you're saying? Into 17 A, B, and C, and we were allowed to purchase 17 B, which was under an acre, but it was joined to our property at 140. It was like 0.8. It was... Under well, an acre. Well, how would the rest of the people in 17 get access to their property? I'm saying they go through servitude. this servitude, and then they would go down the Mr. middle Davey. of the block. There's, it's Sorry. not paved. But, but it is a servitude, so anyone who owns a lot can use that as, as access to their lot. Well, right now it's got, there's a ditch. Well, it did, and, but if, know, it's a, yeah. if it's a servitude, it's a servitude. Yeah. So, so. But that, the, the people on Copal and their relatives who own those lots in the middle of the block, that's their only access. So I understand. that okay. has to be maintained. I understand. Okay. And I agree. The point I was making is, is that when Mr. Davey subdivided that property, he created this servitude, um, this alleyway, for the benefit of these properties if they wish to access there. Some of them depend on it as their only access point, but it's uh, our title refers to that alleyway as well. And so we have an access opportunity from it as well. Okay. Mr. Snyder, you have any other questions? And I know Mr. Book to have some, but Mr. Snyder. Just, just one. And uh, from what I'm hearing, is 17A and 17 one lot? Uh, I believe 17. I'm looking to the neighbors because they know more about what they own than I do. But seven, they... Uh, I believe the Poach House actually owns 17B, which is everything north right. of this piece. That's 15 and 16 and the That's 140. The and, and also sure. to the west, or would you have to travel through that lot, lot to get to mm -hmm. lots 1, 2, and 3? This right. is the servitude, and this is, there's a ditch right. right here, but that's for these people, there are lots all down here. Understood. So... Um, Let's see how I can make this easy. Um, take a look at the Bono survey okay. that everyone has. Uh -huh. Got it. You help me if I okay. steer wrong. Okay. Um, these folks own what you will see is 15, 16, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's to the north of right. this 25-foot common use alleyway. Right. They also own a portion of 17. And that sliver, if you will, runs all the way to the lake. Ah. And their track is lot 17B. Mm -hmm. All of those components <clears throat> that I... And it's on this side of the alley. Just identified is 17B. Um, there's also, I think, a 17A and a 17C. Mm -hmm. And they depend on the alleyway for access as well. Okay. Uh, uh, on what we're looking at on the Bono uh, survey there, the 25-foot common use alley, mm -hmm. it shows it ends at lot 17, but it only must cross lot 17 to get somewhere else. Yes, and only, only because the survey ended there. I do not mean it's suggestive that the alleyway ends there. This was all owned since pre-Civil War by one family. It okay. extends, if you will, to the west Okay, so seven. access to any lots to immediately to the west of this would have to be through these people's property because they own all of 17 that goes from 17B to the lake. It, it, it will definitely be through the 25-foot common use alleyway. Yes, sir. No, I think what he's saying, no, Brian, mm -hmm. that, that, out, that, that thing continues. They bought the north part of mm -hmm. 17, right. not the south part that goes to the lake. Yep. So this... Well, so you don't own on the south side of the alleyway, is that correct? Or just the north, the north side. side. Just They're on the, the north, north side. side. So the south side is uh, someone else's property. It's 17C. <laughs> so 17C is owned by someone else. But 
Did he rezone this? There are three. No, I, I, I get it now. So 17C okay. is the one that abuts the lake and not is owned by a separate Correct. entity. And it depends on the same 25-foot alleyway to get in to, to, to get to Magnolia. As do these four lots here. Right. I think there's a total of maybe six lots. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's my count. Mm -hmm. okay. That would use that 25-foot uh, servitude to get to Magnolia to get to Copal. Okay. Okay. Brian, do you have any more questions? I, I know Mr. Brookton had some. No, I'm good. Mr. Brookton? Jeff, um, I think you he hit your mic up, uh, Lewis. I think you answered my question. Um, the house will face the lake, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Just looking at the, uh, the map here, it kind of looks like uh, it ran... Uh, the other way and not facing the lake. Uh, on the sketch? Yes. Uh, if that's the impression you get, I, the record can reflect and our, if a variance were granted, we understand that it would be conditioned upon the house fronting the lake and maintaining a hundred foot setback from the lake. Gotcha. Anything else, Mr. Brooker? No. Do we have any other questions from any of our? Can I entertain a motion from someone, please? Or you need a little more time to think about it? Or? Mrs. Mr. Snyder? Yeah, like I said before, to me, the 15-foot setback on the uh, west side is a non-issue. Uh, on the east side, um, that appears from everything I have here that when you get to the house, that's going to be the last thing you come to uh, on Magnolia. There's, there's nothing, I mean, there is a house to the east, and it appears to have its driveway off of Magnolia. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. But um, the proposed house will be to the south of that driveway. Is that also correct? It appears to be, but we don't have the overlay of... of yes, slightly south of that driveway. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> and yet... Your proposed new driveway would come off of the 25-foot, uh, okay. Well, I don't have a problem then, and I make a motion to accept the uh, variance as requested. We have a motion to approve, and we have a second. Do we have any discussion among the board or questions? Hearing none, would everyone please vote with the lights? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Our, ne our next case is BOA case number 2019-1669, BOA, request by applicant in an HC2 Highway Commercial Zoning District to allow for the removal of all existing trees within the front, sides, and rear buffers to allow for the construction of a commercial building. The property is located at 69424 Highway 59, Mandeville, Louisiana. The applicant and representative is Pamela Bobby. The applicant is requesting to allow for the removal of all existing trees within the front side and rear buffers to allow for the construction of a commercial building. Staff comments, please. <laughs> As stated in the attached narrative, the removal of all trees located on the property is being requested because the property is mostly covered with tall pine trees. As for the Unified Development Code, the landscaping and preservation regulation requires that the all existing trees over six inches in caliper be preserved within the required buffers on commercially zoned properties. Staff sees no compelling reason to recommend approval considering that no hardship has been demonstrated. Is the applicant present? Would you please come forward and state your name and address for the records, please? Um, my name is Pamela Barbie. Um, 
Do you have anything further to add, Ms. Yeah, Bobby? Um, I had consulted um, several um, professional tree cutters, and they suggested that um, it's best to remove all the trees since um, the trees would be damaged um, uh, during construction, and there's no way to remove all the trees um, after the construction or the building has been built. And um, also, um, the trees pose um, safety hazards because there are um, like a power pole on the south side of it, and it's very close to the trees. And knowing that Louisiana is prone to hurricane, and just like a month or three weeks ago, like I've seen a lot of um, trees falling and trees on the road. So just for the property safety and um, um, also the people who would be uh, there, um, I would like to request if the variance would be accepted. Okay, let's see if we have any questions of you, Ms. Bobby. Mr. Brookter. Hit your mic. Hit your um, mic close. It, um, it's um, considering the the size of the lot. It only has um, 75 feet uh, width, and uh, the building would be 40 feet in um, width, and then it's going to be 40 by 30, and uh, the frontage would be 40. Is there anything else, Lewis? No. Uh, Mr. And, Snyder. And I just want to show also, like, our neighbor, um, this tree that's located next to us, um, the root went to the, um, the foundation of the, um, the, the lot. I think the building has been removed here. <coughs> so um, that could cause also, like, the destruction of the foundation. Yes, uh, was it told to you or explained to you the possibility of uh, mitigation through our tree bank? Are you aware of that? No, sir. It, it, um, it was not discussed to us, but um, I've talked to Buster Street and they have a recommendation here. Um, and also um, to Edmondson, um, tree services, they both um, recommended that it's best to remove the trees. Because once the, the building is there, it's, it's, it's impossible to remove all those trees that are already damaged. Right. It, it does appear from the aerial photograph we have in our packet that um, some of your neighbors may have I really can't tell whether they have trees or not at the back of their properties. Is is do we know? Well, from, from what I'm familiar with, some of that because the one used to be Robert's Hardware on the corner of Robert's Road. They had, right. as far as I know, there's no trees on that particular property, and some of those other ones, unless it's way in the rear of the property, I've never seen no trees pretty okay. much on those properties. It, it it just appears that this is a a row of commercial buildings. And um, you have to get pretty far down south before I see any trees um, that I can identify as trees. Yeah, from all, this. all the neighboring um, properties there, because the lot are like the building is very small, and the lot are small per um, building, and um, the trees are all removed. Right. And this is zoned. What's the zoning? HC two. HC two. Okay. Helen, would well, she be? you know, I think if if we can mitigate the tree situation by paying into the, uh, well, I guess we call it the tree bank, um, that that may be a way, but we would have to, I think, be able to give you some numbers about what we're talking about but in terms sir, of. May I add the the. Um, I tried to um, um, research on trees, and the trunks of the trees 
the roots of the trees goes three, two to three times bigger than the, um, the trunks of it. So even if you treat it, you got to dig it. They have to dig the, uh, the roots because um, they said it's the best way to do it. So if, they're gonna, if, if, it's, um, if it's that wide, then there's only like 15 feet mm -hmm. from the uh, setbacks to the building, which is, I think it would hit it. So how, how, how are you going to... Uh, no, well, I think what Mr. Snyder is, is trying to explain is that we have a, a tree bank mitigation where people with the parish where you could offset planting some of the required trees you would have to have and they would plant the trees somewhere else in the parish but you would buy the trees and they'll be planted somewhere else yeah I, I, and, and to further um, obviously you would be able to remove the trees where the footprint of the building is uh, as it complies with setback regulations trees that are not in that footprint, and I think we generally allow at least five, six, seven feet from a slab. Uh, we're not able to tell what's left, that you may have trees that you, we may wish for you to save or mitigate. So uh, I'm at a loss for... Um, I have... What, um, so what you could do a is... A survey. What's that? What could be done here is that um, if she applies for a land clearing permit and uh, clears the inside of the property, then it's gonna be, give us a better idea of maybe what could, what, what is left on the property. Mm -hmm. If you wanna postpone the case and then uh, see what's left and if you wanna continue with, you know, her request, the original request, so if there's a, a possibility to preserve some of the trees. Yeah, I, I, I think that may be the way we need to go, in my opinion, because there may be a very small number of trees that would be able, number one, to survive, and uh, uh, number two, that you wouldn't have to pay for to remove uh, in two ways, obviously the cost of removal of the tree and the stump grinding, but then the mitigation as well. So I, I, I would like to propose that we postpone this for a month in order to find out exactly where the trees are of the size that that would you know would meet the compliance to remain obviously you can take out a three or four inch pine tree anytime you like but uh, because of the regulations um, of the six inch rule you would certainly be able to take out the ones within the footprint and immediately around the building, but we don't know what's left. See? I have a tree survey, sir. Yeah. Who, who did this tree survey? Huh? Um, can, can, I forgot the name of the tree survey company. Kyle and Associates. John Kami? Kyle and Associates? No, John Kami? Huh? Something like John Cummings? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, for example, at the rear of the property, I see a 24-inch twin oak tree on here that's noted in red. It seems to me that that tree might be able to be saved. Now, maybe our landscape people would be able to give us a better opinion about if that tree is going to survive after construction. I don't know. And then uh, there's a 24-inch pine tree all the way to the back of the property. Um, I, it seems like that one might be able to be saved. In other words, I, I'm trying to get you your permit um, and work within the rules that are established for, for trees. And um, there may be a 30-inch pine up near the front of the property that not only would be saved but may enhance uh, your property and it seems to be off to the side and out of the way of construction. Uh, they should be able to work around that. Is there a scale on this? Does anyone see a scale on this drawing? No. Well, if the lot's 75 wide, so an inch. You have the setbacks. It's about 25 feet to the inch. Mm -hmm. So that 30-inch pine looks like it's 18 to 20 feet off the front of the building. Mm -hmm. And um, 
Now, as far as those tallow trees, they need to go no matter what. I don't think those are included. Any I don't trees? think the parish recognizes tallow trees as being anything worth saving. So. But a huge pine tree is. What's that? A pine tree is yeah. in that, from what I read. Right. So that's correct. Right. But the tallow trees, I don't think are. Okay, well. Uh, may, may I add, sir? Yes. Um, is it possible to just replant it, um, to replant new trees, um, the A and the B? Oh, to plant yeah. trees after construction? I mean, um, to Certainly. replace those trees that uh, will be cut within the setbox. Well, we because the trees need, are too tall. Need to get an They're opinion. like 30, 30 feet tall next to the building. Yeah, well, I can certainly see trees that are way too close to the building and, and certainly would be allowed to be taken out. Uh, like that 10-inch red maple tree, which is right up against the proposed building. That's a shame that it has to go, but there's no way that could be, be, could be saved during construction. That's the one shown in blue. You have a 15-inch bay tree in the back, same situation, right along the footprint of the building. So, um, I don't know, should, if we postpone this, can we get uh, landscape okay, involved? Wait, wait, uh, uh, Mr. Brook, well, let, let, let Brian finish and I'll give you the floor, Lewis. Yeah, that, that was my only question to staff, is if we postpone this, can we get the landscape lady involved and, and get a clearer picture of what can be saved or new plantings what the that would be recommended? Because there's no recommendations here. But the first thing that will have to be done is the owner will have to apply for the land clearing permit and get the, the property cleared. Once the property is cleared, then they will see what's, what's left, and then we can come back and give a second opinion. But at this time, you know, we have to make sure that the owner will have enough sufficient time to apply for the land clearing permit and get the work done. So I don't know if you want to postpone to January or February. So um, is it like clear the lot and leave whatever is in the setback and then see what's left and then cut? So that would be like a double job. It, this is if that's what the board wants to do. So what, what he's saying, if you clear where the building is going to be, take clear that and just leave the, the trees that are on the outside, then we can get a better assessment. And some of those may, may be allowed to be taken out. Some, we don't know. You may have to mitigate and do something else with it. So we're just giving you an option of a way of looking at it. And I'm going to give Mr. Book to the floor. Well... I think I think um, we we need to have the young lady work with the uh, with Helen and her group to really kind of identify what trees need to be cut. And I think uh, we're we're kind of sitting here going back and forth on the size of the trees, not really knowing uh, what has to be cut and and those type things so if we postpone this and have Helen work directly with uh, the young lady then uh, I think we'll we'll be okay if you want to bring it back to us for review then that would be fine but um, we're kind of going back and forth here Ma'am, do you think that you have enough time to have the land clearing done by December, or do you want to request to postpone until January? Well, when I talk to the um, land clearing company, they are suggesting to remove all the trees. Um, like I said, because it's, they said it would um, cause damage to the, um, the, the construction, like the digging of the the roots could cause damages to the trees, which later on could kill the tree. So how are we going to know if um, but, but what we're saying after clearing it, how, we, how are we going to know if the trees are going to survive or not and, yeah. until after a few years or so? But, but I think uh, what we're saying is clear the area where you're going to build a building 
and then uh, have, uh, have us come back and take a look at it and see if those trees on the, on the outskirts of the uh, property could be saved or we could uh, have those uh, cut down or whatever. It cannot be like decided now or look at, look at now, because it's it's there. Everything is in is in the survey. Everything is in the what? Uh, Everything sorry is in the survey. It says in the survey the size of the trees, and um, being I think in the board member, and I think you've been doing this for a long time. You have an idea how the trees work and how they. <laughs> they survive or how they um, survive in the, um, in the construction like this. Because um, doing a construction, you do need to do some planning. You cannot just do and then proceed and go like by, by work. I would have to have I don't know. It has to be foreseen before it's done. You cannot do, and then you made a mistake, and then you're going to do and do something about it. I look at the 24-inch uh, base twin oak in a, in a back. Uh, this is quite far from the building. You know, that might be at least one well, tree that you could... Well, looking at this one, looking at the picture next to our lot, the property, this is very far. It's like 20 feet far, far from the, um, the trees from, to the concrete. It went all the way in there. So even if the, the tree survived, it's going to distract the construction of the foundation of the building. This is already um, an existing one, which is just right next to the lot. There's a foundation. I think the building has been removed here because of this, what's going on. Um, it's not safe for the uh, building to be put there. Um, if we all know that later on, it could damage the, the foundation of the building. So what's the use of putting the building there if we all know that it's going to be <laughs> distracted in the future? I mean, there's an ex existing here. Slab will require footings. Yeah. I mean, we're trying to that's save the trees, but we, we are trying to. Huh? The footings have to go down three feet, yeah. so that, that's not going to be an issue. I mean, it's not going to be the issue she's talking about. She's asking to remove all the trees, though, correct? Mm -hmm. So you can't, we can't modify so you can move just in the building footprint. Or can we? You can. She would have to modify her request. Well, you can, you can make a statement. Uh... Okay. And then come back and say, hey, we got these other trees that have to be dealt with.
Uh, yes. No. Um, yes. Anyway, there are a number of options that you have available that uh, uh, can resolve this issue. From what I see from the tree survey, there's only 13 trees that uh, we're talking about, and those are mostly near the property lines or close to the property lines, and certainly a, a, a distance from the slab. So um, if you wanted to take out all the ones that are either in the slab or many of them, as we can see here, are just touching, they're right at the edge of the slab, those can certainly come out because they'd have to come out anyway. Um, leaving just the ones at the perimeter and then, um, you, or, you know, you can see what happens with those, but you could also uh, take everything out and, and get work with the parish on a mitigation plan or a replanting plan. So there, there are a number of options, but I don't think we have um, enough landscape background here in this group to be able to uh, define all of those options for you exactly. Therefore, I, I would recommend we either postpone or maybe she can meet with the department and, and get those options in writing to choose which, one, which way she wants to go. Just, just a quick question. If we allow her to move everything in the slab, and then drop the job would be included in that? Well, it's not just within a slab. She, she's allowed to remove everything that is inside of the buildable area here, so outside the setback plus the driveway, yes. Plus the driveway. Yeah. And she could do that and then come back. And if she, don't check, she doesn't modify it, then that would be the same. Well, she could just move it. Then we'll see the trees that are remaining. We can get a second opinion from Regan and, you know, see if there's anything that is worth... Um, yeah. Preserving. Yeah, I'd like to get Regan involved somewhere, somehow. Mr. Bo Ms. Bobby, uh, we, we, we're caught in a little dilemma here. Um, I think the board feels that if you would go and just clear where the driveway is going to go and where the perimeter of the building, take those trees out, then we can look at it and give a better assessment getting with Reagan, a landscape architect, to say, yeah, these trees need to come out also. If you do not wish to modify your petition, then, then we stuck with how you came in, and then we, we have to either vote yes or no to let you take all the trees, or you don't take none of the trees. So we, we got, we're trying to work with you on it, give you another option how you can maybe get this resolved. We're not saying that... that after you take out all the trees in the middle, you wouldn't be allowed to take out additional trees. But we need a little bit further information to make a, a valid a judgment concerning this. So we're trying to work with you, but you have to, you would have to elect to modify your petition to just remove the trees in the slab area and the driveway now, and then our landscape architect could get with you and say, yes, these other trees, either has to be mitigated or they could be removed or whatever, depending on, they, they could be damaged, they, they may be rotten, we don't know until we can actually see from someone saying, yeah, these trees are not going to make it. We just don't know. So I'm, I'm just trying to give you the two options that you can do here. Hopefully you understand what I'm saying. You know, no, okay, let, let me try. Um, is, is it correct, like, um, you're telling me that I can cut all the trees um, except for the setbacks? No, except no, yeah, yes, except for the setback. You can cut the trees that would be in your driveway, how you got shown, and the trees in, in the building area. You could cut all those trees now. Once you get those cut, then our landscape architect a person can get out there, engineer can get out there and say, yes, these other trees need to go or they can stay. And if they need to go, then we need to work that out. Or if they are going to go, how it's going to be handled. But I, I just don't know how it's going to be handled but at this point. that is already what it's supposed to be if I didn't come here. Like if I ask for a permit to clear the land, that's how it's supposed to be. Wait, wait I'm sorry, say that again. If I just 
went straight to ask for a permit to clear the property, I would be allowed to cut all the trees. No, then you couldn't cut all no, the trees. Cut, cut all the trees except for the setbacks. That's it's correct. It's just the same thing that you were telling me at the moment. So that, that's correct. That's correct. You would, you could do that. You could, I think you still need a permit to cut the trees on the building. You still need a permit to cut the trees inside sure, your like building, I, I, but, but you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't be stopped from cutting a tree inside the building area. Oh, would I be stopped if I didn't come here? Yes. If you went and just start cutting trees down. No, that, with, with a permit, with a permit and um, with a permit to cut the trees, um, I, I would be stopped cutting the trees if I and not touching the, the those within the setbox. I think that that should be. I mean, if I didn't come over here, I, I don't I, know if I understand. And the, if I if I just applied for um, to cut the trees, uh -huh. I would be allowed to cut all the trees that you are telling me now. Ma'am, this um, is this is what they're suggesting you. They're asking you, is is you apply for a land clearing permit and you cl you cut the interior of the lot, including your driveway. Then we'll, ha we'll get a chance to go look at the existing trees if there are more damaged trees or other existing trees that should be cut. And then we'll give a second observation or a second opinion in that regards. It doesn't mean that we will that it will be granted or not. Now, if you'd rather for the board to just vote on your request today, they can do so. You can request to postpone, clear the interior, and come back to get the board to look at it again, or you can ask the board to vote on your request. Just to clarify, if she postpones, there's no more fees involved with that. If she went and just and cleared the interior and then come back, then she wouldn't have to pay the fee. But if she gets denied, then she would have to pay more fees. To She's going to have to reapply. Yeah. Do you understand that, Ms. Barbie? If you go, if you elect, and this is purely your decision, if you elect just to go clear the interior of the lot, where the building, excuse me, the footprint of the building and your driveway, you can go do that and postpone the additional trees to after you get that done, then we can make a better assessment of what you have or staff will make a better assessment of your other trees. We're not saying that they're going to allow you to keep those trees or let you take them out. We just don't know. We, without getting assessment, we can't make that decision right now. And what you have to do is just change your, your, <clears throat> your option. And what he's... Uh, Asking you now is option one, that you could go and clear that, that area where the slab and your, and your, and your walk area is going to be, and then you come back to us, and, and we'll review it from that point. Well, I guess I have no choice. Well, no, yes, you do. <laughs> you have a choice. I mean, you have a choice. You, you, you don't want us to, to vote on that and and vote that down, what you want us to do is have you come back to us after you've done the work on the land. And right also, now we just can't make a fair assessment with uh, what you're asking. And, and please be advised that looking at this tree survey, there are five pines, one bay, and one red maple that have been five pines in yellow, red maple in blue, and the bay in green, and all of those are touching the line for development of the parking lot. At least in my opinion, you can take those out along with the interior trees. But would you be able to, like, um, like you said earlier, the tallow trees has to go, would you be able to, like, at least pinpoint some of the trees that you would allow to be cut within the setback at the moment? Yeah, if you would come forward, we could show you on the map, and it might be Let's, easy no, to explain. No, 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 no. no. <clears throat> no Ma'am, you, you can elect to, to, to request to move forward and come back, okay? And then we will show you the trees that can be taken down. You know, the, the, our landscape architect will identify those trees, or you can ask the board to vote on your request today. You well, know, I, I think, I, I, think okay. I, I think it's preferable for Regan to show her the trees that that can be taken down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 
So would you like to postpone this and get with the landscape all out with Miss Regan and can, she can show you what trees you can take down now? Well, I got no choice, sir. <laughs> no, you, you do have a choice. You have a choice. <laughs> you have a choice. You can say, no, I don't want to do that and vote on what you proposed and then we have to vote as a board on what you, your and, initial request. And we're suggesting just based on our experience and trying to help people in the same situation that uh, uh, what's been just discussed now about how to proceed is actually going to benefit you. It's going to be a, a good way to proceed. There may end up being no trees on the lot, but we can't make that determination. There is a professional uh, landscape architect with the parish who makes that final decisions. Uh, you you know you may end up with um, some trees on right on the property line. But if I'm gonna postpone it, sir, um, you said it, there's um, the landscape architect that determines it. Would that person be here when I, if I postpone it and come back here? Yeah, we're gonna get back with you, ma'am. We'll get back with you between now and then, so you would meet with her. But I still have to cut all the trees first before before doing that, right? I have to cut the trees first. I have to clear the property first. No, no. Yes, no. yes, no. yes, yes. The inside <laughs> will have to be cleared so we can do an assessment of what's left. But you're saying she should get with Reagan before she starts. Yeah, She's going to have to apply for a land clearing permit, identify the buffer, go and clear where her driveway is, as well as interior. Then Regan will be able to look at what the, the trees that are left on the property. If there are some trees that are damaged, obviously she can take those trees down. We'll see what is what is left. That's the option that that can happen. So it's gonna be double job for us. Mm. Like, not really. Because we're get, I'm, I would have to hire a tree cutting services and then check and then if there's something that has been damaged then I would have to rehire them again and do it again. That's possibility. If you're in my position, I mean practically that's not a practical thing to do. I mean if if you're the one who's we well like I, I'm trying to make sure you understand. We can, you can postpone it, and hopefully, this is going to be the best solution for you. If well, you don't, just, if you don't want to postpone, then we have to vote on what's presented. I can't say how the board's going to vote, but we only have four members, and you have to get four affirmative votes. Four? Yes, you have to. Normally, we have five members. We have one. We have some members that are not here today, so you have to have all four members voting to overturn the thing the way you could clear all the trees. So if I'll you don't- just postpone it, sir. Okay. All right, so you requested to postpone it. We have to vote on, on the postponement. But, yeah, we have to have a motion to postpone. I make a motion to postpone. But just to verify again, sir, do I need to clear the lot first before- No, 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 ma'am. You're gonna get, you're gonna okay. get- No, it's not gonna happen. She will have to apply for a land clearing permit and clear the, the lot. You know, it's not going to be, we're not going to give an assessment without her clearing okay. the inside. Okay. Okay. So do you still wish to move forward with doing that? Um, yeah, I, w I, I, w I would do that. There's no other reasonable choice. <laughs> Okay, so you agree? I'll, I'll just postpone okay. it, sir. Okay. All right. We, do we have a motion on that, uh, to postpone? And, all right, I make a motion to postpone uh, 2019-1669 to next month. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have any discussion? Will you have enough sufficient time to have it uh, cleared before December 3rd? Clear the land before December 3rd. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's vote. Please vote with the lights. Yes. Motion carries. So, the, I'm, excuse me, the hearing would be um, December 3rd? Yes. Yes, So, if you want to give us a call tomorrow and then we'll help you uh, move forward with the land clearing. Okay. Okay.
Our next case is two is BOA case number two zero one nine one six seven zero BOA request by applicant in an HC two highway commercial zoning district to allow for an additional single occupancy monument sign and to allow for a neon border along the eaves and roof lines of a commercial building, not being an integral part of the face of sign. The property is located at 2891 Highway 190 Suite D, Mandeville, Louisiana. The applicant and representative is Felix Restaurant and Oyster Bar. Robbie Ojorn is the applicant. The applicant is requesting to allow for the additional single occupancy monument sign and to allow for a neon border along the eaves and roof lines of the commercial building, not being as an integral part of the face of sign. Staff comments, please. The first request is to allow for the placement of a monument sign within five feet of the front property line to identify the proposed new restaurant. Note that there's an existing multi-occupancy monument sign on a property which is currently being used to advertise all the tenants of the Strip Shopping Center. The property is currently 500 feet in width and does not allow for a second monument sign to be placed on the property. Note that as per the Unified Development Code, the number of monument signs allowed on a property shall not exceed one per 1,000 square foot of frontage. Staff is not in support of the requested variances. No hardship or practical difficulty has been demonstrated in granting the variance would definitely set a precedent. The second request is to allow for a neon border along the eave and the roof lines of the commercial building to allow for a new restaurant to be seen notice from the road. The variance is being requested considering that as shown on the attached drawing, the neon border is not integrated as part of the fascia sign. Note that the Unified Development Code uh, only allows neon if it's uh, considered as part of the, the sign itself. Staff does not see any re reason to support the variance request considering that the property does not have any unique physical characteristics or conditions affecting the visibility of the fascia sign from the street. Is the applicant present? Would you please state your name and address for the records, please? Sure. My name is Barbin Graham. My address is 2051 East Ramsey Drive, Baton Rouge, 70808. Ms. Graham, do you have anything further to add? Yes. Um, Felix's Restaurant and Oyster Bar opened in New Orleans in 1940. It is one of the best oyster bars in the city. Since then, it's expanded in New Orleans, Gulfport, Mississippi, and is now open in Mandeville. Since moving into their space on US 190, it's become apparent that their restaurant is difficult to find. Customers, delivery personnel, and new staff are constantly calling to say they cannot locate the restaurant. Before Felix has leased this space, Legacy Restaurant was in it and lasted less than nine months, and a second restaurant in Teenies moved in and closed after just one year. It's our thought that unless new signage is installed, Felix's will also have trouble staying open. The existing monument sign has 16 tenant spaces, each measuring 18 inches by two feet. Based on sign visibility charts, the one foot lettering on each panel can only be seen for five to seven seconds when you're traveling at 35 miles per hour. Cut that time in half because you're searching within a monument sign and you have about three seconds to find what you're looking for. In addition, if you're traveling east, the tenant sign is behind the entrance. It's about 400 feet after the entrance to pull in. If you're traveling west, I'm sorry, if you're traveling east, the, if you're traveling west, the tenant sign is after the entrance. If you're traveling east, you have to look across the median, two lanes of traffic, find the monument sign, and then find what you're looking for. The restaurant suites in the back corner of the parking lot. It sits approximately 160 feet from the road. There is a wall sign on the building currently, but if you're traveling east on the road, you cannot see it until you've passed the building as well. The border neon will make it stand out from the road as, as well as the additional monument sign and make it large enough to read when you're going down 190. Felix is, is projected to do $3 million in sales in its first year in Mandeville. We need your help to make sure they can reach that goal so they can pay their taxes for St. Timothy Parish. Okay, Do we have any questions? Uh, Mr. Snyder? 
Yes, um, I don't know how familiar you are with this exact location, but uh, we had a long and gruesome construction project that seemed to go on for several years and destroyed a number of businesses in the same development. So we've had quite a few go out of business because of that, because people couldn't get there. Um, now that's all done. So you, you do have a lot of traffic at that location. Um, I personally would be in favor of the mon additional monument sign, but not the neon, especially outlining the roof lines. Uh, I just don't think that's appropriate uh, for that building and for that type of commercial development. But um, I'd like to hear what others have to say. Yes, sir. Would you state your name and yes, address. Sir. Robbie Ogeron, um, 255 Saxony Court, Bell Chase, Louisiana. I'm the president of Felix's Restaurant and Oyster Bar. Um, what you're saying as far as with the neon, it's actually not neon. It is an LED mm -hmm. lighting. Yeah. Um, it would just be on that front arch, which is where our sign is. And then it would also just carry back, and it would be on the low. We wouldn't want to go up high where it would be, you know, it would just want to bring, if you're familiar with our New Orleans location in our area, we're lit up underneath the, the balconies with white neon. Um, we've, in our other two locations, yes, we have done the eaves. We have done everything as far as lighting them, you know, going on the lakefront, our Gulfport location. What we're asking for is just to kind of continue with that aspect. Because right now, if you're coming from East Causeway Approach, you start to see our sign, but you already passed up the entrance. There is two, two monument signs, one to the entrance and one to Meadowbrook, that both say Pelican, and that's where we're proposing that the monument sign would be, um, just for clarification, um, is what we were looking at with that look, doing that. That would be... As far as the uh, LED, is that uh, what that you're would proposing? Be, yes. I don't necessarily think we have to have the top part, but we do want to do the underneath for sure if that would be approved. Okay. So you would be at the um, uh, at the beam, I guess, uh, what would you call that? The eave. The eave. Yeah. yeah. But not... Um, we above. wouldn't have to follow, follow the roof or it, the ridge. No. Line. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't before that, like I said, it, I don't think it's appropriate for the surrounding neighborhood to have that much lighting up that high, um, but possibly lighting that is at the eave or at the overhang. Is there an overhang? Yeah. There's a, There's a face shit in the overhang. Okay. Also, the other aspect of that would be we do have a walkway. Um, would it be opposed to us, like uh, down in the quarter, having it underneath the walkway? Is that I, I would have no objection to that. Okay. You know that that would not that would light up your walkway and light up the front of your building and, and make it safe for people walking, but uh, just not something that's seen from uh, inside the post office, which is diagonally across the street. I have the Walgreens. Diagonally. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. In between. Yes, sir. That's what I mean. Yeah, I yeah. apologize. Yeah. The, the monument sign, there's one for that shopping center right now? The other one, he mentioned Pelican. That, that's separate from the shopping center, correct? Yes. I, I would like to point out the regulation, the current regulation, and, you know, that, you know, this is, there's a maximum number of monument sign that is allowed per thousand square feet on the frontage of a of a piece of property. I I I can understand that and I feel like if that monument sign if the tenant sign were more centered on that property it might help with that. But the tenant sign is at the extreme end of the property. So if you're going east 
you're looking across two lanes in a, in a median to even see it. If you're going west, you've already passed the entrance by about 400 feet. You're going to have to cross two lanes of traffic to go to your U-turn and come back to get to it. So I think mainly because of the location of that tenant sign, it, it is very difficult to see. Um, and so we're just asking for an additional monument sign in the middle of the property that will show you where Felix's is so you're not blocking traffic, running across lanes, all of that. Have you discussed with the owner the possibility of maybe having, you know, relocating the existing sign on the property and include a portion of it for your business? Uh, I'm, I'm aware of the location, and it's difficult to be, to be seen, probably for all the other tenants as well. Mm -hmm. We have not discussed that. Um, I can't imagine that they'd be willing to go to that expense. Um, it would probably be about a $20,000 new sign they'd have to do, and I can't imagine, based on one tenant asking, that they would be willing to do that. Felix's is a very popular restaurant, as you all know, and I feel like the revenue that it's going to bring to the city would be worth the additional signage that it has there. But And we have yeah. spoken with Wayne, um, the landlord, ma'am, and when we spoke with them, they were not opposed, and I think it's in there of us where the existing, not the building sign, but the Pelican on either end, where the signs for the Pelican, would that's where we would want the monument, and that's he had nothing that against that. Well, the the With Pelican, the, the one of the Pelican sign is on a separate parcel of land. The other sign is, is at the entrance. Is at the entrance. So your sign is not going to be anywhere near there. Your sign will have to be on the property in but the we middle. Proposed, we're proposing based on what y'all said. Just, the just sign west here, of you're the saying Pelican. you could do well, it he here. He was saying we could do. When we originally so they, talked, sign number three is on here, would be behind that, within the feet. Oh, it wouldn't be in front of it. It would be, so where you see the first Pelican sign coming from, I guess, the west, where the Chico is, like entrance to the Pelican Athletic Club, mm -hmm. that sign, we had when we spoke with the landlord, we'd be able to put our monument sign there behind it, like kind of theirs is in front, ours would be directly parallel behind it. Oh. No, you you can't do that because that's a separate parcel of land. How is it's our entrance to our property? I understand, but it's but two then, separate parcels of land. This, this that's why they were allowed to put another right sign there. Your in, your property okay. ends here. Now we're we're proposing, we're proposing to put it okay. on the servitude in the front. Is that what we're talking about uh, from the drawing? Existing monument sign number three. That's, what we're that, talking that's about right currently now? there. What, what we're proposing is the monument sign you see in the middle. Um, oh, just oh, basically, I see. Well, that it, would it would be, be somewhere in there. I mean, we would get with Helen on the on the placement of the sign in there. Right. right now, from you, we just need approval that we could do an additional sign, and we would work with Helen um, to locate the sign if if we were to get approved right. for that. Yeah, it appears to me that where you show monument sign with no number, that's right. On their that's property. the proposed new sign. It's that's here, right. not here. Correct. Okay. Correct. Uh, yeah, and I feel like it. it whatever restaurants there is the anchor of that development. Everybody ref tells everybody else, uh, you know, if you want to go to one of those shops, if you know where Antini's is, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've all been there for many years. Um, I am concerned that other tenants of this development may want their own monument sign. That was my concern. If we allow one, what's going to stop the next tenant from coming in and say, well, if that sign is too small for me. Could, I need could you call it the anchor building of the shopping center and that's why well, that was in that regard it may help people find other right. businesses i i agree you know, i mean if find it's felix is your close right it's like best buy best buy's got the huge sign and everybody knows what's in the best buy shopping center it could be the anchor of that shopping center what what would the height require or what is the height regulations i guess you would say if we were to do a monument sign where they maybe would be able to would we 
Like what is the height requirements or what is the regulations? Well, right now you're requesting a single tenant yeah. sign, yeah. so it's 32 <laughs> square feet. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're 32 square feet. feet. Yeah. Yeah. Your drawing uh, is the legal size. Yeah, it's four by eight. Size. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hmm. What's the height? In other words, this shows on a slab that can be elevated, correct? It could be up to a, a two foot tall a base. Yeah, we'll base. work with, you don't have to necessarily approve that exact sign. We'll certainly go for a permit to get the actual sign permitted and get the correct size and location. We just need permission right now to have the additional sign and the border neon and or the border neon. When you say the border neon, that's on the roof? Well, we'd like to first apply for it on the eave not on the roof line, the eave. If you don't feel that's appropriate, our second option would be to do underneath, underneath. on the walkway. Yeah. Um, on, on, somewhere on the soffit. Yes, our first request is on the eave and the roof line. Mm -hmm. um, if, if, if you'd like us to amend that to underneath because you don't think that the eave and the roof line is appropriate, we can amend our request. And they are two separate requests. But the Felix itself would be Neon or, or the Felix's sign is already up. Yeah, okay. Yes. Which is very, you can clearly see it from the street very well. Not necessarily with all the trees. I, I've, I've had people already call us. I, mm -hmm. How long is this property in all the buildings? How many feet is it? 500 feet wide. It's 500 feet wide. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It, it appears to me that where uh, this drawing shows the monument sign, you've, you've passed the entrance by 300 feet. We will work on that. The only reason I, I think we propose that is to not have it on top of the other sign, if we're allowed. Like I said, we'll work with Helen on the placement of the sign. Of course, we'd like it closer to that entrance. Um, definitely, we'd like it cl as close to that entrance as we can get it. Just for approval purposes, um, we've just shown it in the middle, but we would definitely like to have it close to the entrance, and I will certainly work with Helen on the placement of it. If, if you'd like to include the placement of it okay. in this request, we can certainly do that as well. Okay. Uh, are, you, are you open there, or are you have a date set? We uh, did a soft opening on Thursday of last week. Um, we're only open in the p.m. right now. Uh, Thursday will be open a.m. and p.m. Okay. Y'all are invited Thursday night. <laughs> well, we will be having a different party, but they'll be invited too. Do you think? No, we have that. I would just. Let me give you a floor. Oh, yeah. Just set your mic on. I got it. Make it green. It's green. <laughs> um, I, I would just like to say that I, when Nintini's was there, um, I found if we went at night that that side, it gets very dark. And also walking out of that restaurant, because we used to have meetings there, it was dark and there were a lot of ladies that that... that is not well lit, and I would think that that's sort of a safety thing to have that that light in the on the eve. I mean, I don't. I, under the soffit. Uh, yeah, under the soffit. Now I agree that the top would be a little too much, but I think underneath I, it's almost a safety thing. I would have felt much more secure sometimes uh, because I think that the lighting helps and it does call attention to to Felix's. And by the way, I I do love your oysters, but that's that would be my comment. Well, I'm okay. I'm okay with uh, what you're proposing. Now, just so we're clear, it, or they have to modify their request as far as the neon on the building. 
Do, would you like us to modify it to say um, only under this un, un, only no rooftop? No rooftop. No roof for it. But are you approve? Would you approve the eave? Are you not approving the eave and the? I think what Miss Fitzgerald was saying at the front of that facade where the roof line comes down and meets where it ends, where a gutter would normally be. She would like to see that lit up okay. for safety reasons. Okay, so that, that roof line there, where a gutter would be. So are you referring to just the bottom part, just but the not bottom. this one? Not the very top, but would the arch be allowed? The that, arch that, and, and yes, the bottom one. Okay, so the arch and the bottom. Not not the roof, the very okay. pitch. That's what roof. you're asking. Okay. Mr. Snyder. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion, but I'd also like for us to all be on the same page concerning the lighting of the building so there's no misunderstanding about what we agree on, what we're talking They're about. They're asking just a roof That here. goes away. No, they want this and this here, but not this. That's what they're asking. The triangle and along the base. That's what they're requesting. Oh. Okay, so you're saying you're just going to eliminate the higher lines and, and save the triangle over the, uh, the, or the chevron over the thing. Yeah. And then the lighting that would light up sidewalks and a little bit of the parking lot. That's what they're requesting. Okay, well, that's what they're amenable to or agreeable to. Okay, do we have that understanding yes. then that we'd be talking about these lower lines here mm -hmm. and... Yes. This yes. inverted chevron. Omitting the top one. And that, Correct. that outside area directly when you're going to the front door to the left that would be considered the patio area, it is very dimly lit whatsoever. There it could be because the other buildings are office buildings and they're closed, so they do not illuminate at night. So yes, we would definitely want that lower ridge in the V. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, I'm okay with that and also the location of the monument sign I think should be more uh, halfway between the other two um, so that they're spread out and that makes all three of them more visible and so I will make that motion no, no. You, you need me to restate that yeah that would be the monument sign located roughly halfway between the other two which puts it on the property and uh, the lighting will be limited to the uh, uh, soffit lighting and uh, a chevron uh, across the top of the word Felix. And of course, Felix would be lit up as well. Yes, sir. That, that's my motion. Lewis, second? Or okay, well, we've got a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion or questions? Would everyone please vote with your lights? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Our next case is BOA case number 2019-1672 BOA. <clears throat> Request by applicant in an A4 single family residential zoning district for the reduction of the required <laughs> rear yard setback from 25 feet to 10.92 feet to allow for the addition of an awning to a single family residence. The property is located at 1005 Palmetto Court, Slidell, Louisiana. The applicant is Ronald Luby. Request by applicant for a re reduction in the required rear yard setback from 25 feet to 10.92 feet. Staff comments, please. The reduction of the rear yard setback is being requested to allow for the addition of a 300 square foot awning to the single family residence. The purpose of the awning is to provide shade over the back porch and to protect the rear access or the back door <coughs> to the residence. Staff is not in support of the requested variance considering that no evidence of hardship or practical difficulty has been demonstrated to support the encroachment within the required setback. Is the applicant present? 
Would you please state your name and address for the records, please? <laughs> my name's Ronald Luby. My address is 1005 Palmetto Court, Slidell, Louisiana. Mr. Luby, do you have anything further to add? Just that my back door is rotting out from the way the rain is comes in, and that's the reason for wanting the awning. I have um, letters from neighbors and pictures of other, other houses in the subdivision that have awnings on the back of them that are well within 25 foot of their neighbors. Mr. Snyder. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, this drawing that was included in our packet it looks more like a pergola. Is, are, are we talking about a pergola, an awning, a, a roof I'm, structure? I'm, I'm not sure what to call it. It's going to be attached to the back of the house and come off, and it's going to be open air, but it's going to have shingles that match the shingles that are part of the house. Oh, so that ain't it. Yeah, it's just, it's just roof lines that it's showing, yes. Extending okay. the roof? It, it's, a, it's a pitched roof, a flat yes. roof? It'll be pitched. Pitched uh, away from your house? Yes. Okay. It means it would drain uh, how close to the property line? Do we know? It would hit about um, 11 foot from the, the fence, the back oh, fence. That's where it will end is 11 foot, one inch from the back fence. Okay, no drainage problem. Do, do you have the letters with you? Yes, I do. I have letters and, and photographs. Ah, the neighbors. The letters you have, I haven't seen them yet. Is that from the neighbors? Behind you? One is um, beside me. The other one's um, across the street that actually views it. The person who's directly behind me, I wasn't able to get in contact with. Our work schedules just didn't jive. Is this an awning also in this one that extends way past that? I have pictures from two pictures of 1009, with which is two houses down from me, 1008 Palmetto, and then 1101 Indigo. With which is down the road from me. The, which one is the two houses from you? Should have been the first two. Or the first two? This one's one. a. This one? Yes, uh, the one in your right hand, and then there's a. I think there's a further out one. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe that mm. one? Yes. But that mm. one's screen. Yours won't be screened, correct? No, it'll be open. It does no, look like it's a metal roof, though. He has on his. Mm hmm. I have no electric, no, no gas, no water planning to go out there. Just have, just have it open. Hmm. Uh, do you, do you happen to know how much overhang you have at that point where this is to be attached? About a foot, foot okay. and a half. All right. But I, I was mean, about to say if you did have. Three My, feet, then you probably could ha just not have it attached, and then you wouldn't be here today. Correct. But, I mean, I have um, a patio there. I wanted to put it into um, – the patio came with the house. I wanted to put it into ground, or else I'd only gone out about 10 foot instead of 15 foot. Okay. A con um, concrete slab. And it's going to be 15. I bought that. I purchased the house. And everything was there as you, uh, when you bought it. Correct.
Do we have any other questions? Twenty-five feet, eleven inches. Yes, Mr. Luby. Uh, uh, would you be willing to compromise on the 15-foot uh, dimension, um, possibly reducing that maybe to 12 feet out from the house? If I reduce it from 12 feet out from the house, I don't have the ability to um, put the post four to five feet into the ground. I'll be putting it on a slab. Oh. Correct. Oh. Oh, I see. You have a 15-foot slab already. Okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we tell from those pictures how close other people's but well, there's Only one, so. there was two houses, that's why I was on, he was pretty far back, too. And if you look at the area of view, it's hard to tell from the area of view, but if you look at the area of view of lot number 477, if you look at the area of view pictures. 477, yeah. That, that's two doors down, and he took a picture of that one, which is two doors down from him. Right. It extends pretty far out, so that's a cover. So he's pretty close to his rear property line also. Oh, and 467, 68, and 69 are also at the top of the aerial view? Yeah, on, yeah, I see that, yes. It looks like a fairly common thing. Of course, I can't tell whether those are slabs or, or house. Is this a subdivision? Yes, sir. Have you talked to the Homeowners Association? Again, my, I'm, I'm a contractor, so I'm working about 60, 70 hours a week trying to get in there to see them during normal business hours of 8 a.m. to about 4 p.m. just isn't feasible. I mean, but you could write them a letter to ask them to, with their opinion if they were the Homeowners Association? Do they have one? Do you have a Homeowners oh, well, Association? We do, yes, we do have an HOA. I can, um, I can request a letter. I can submit a letter, certified mail to them. That would help. And is one of these handwritten letters from the 474, his backyard neighbor? No. No, it's 1009, but it, it, we don't have that. I don't know where 1009. That's your next, that's your next. My next door neighbor. That'll be to your left. If you're, yes, left-hand side of my house. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the front. That'll be lot 476. Right, yeah. I was thinking of 474 because that's where it's going, in that direction. <clears throat> no, he, he said he couldn't contact, he hasn't been able to contact that gentleman. Mm, mm, mm. Well, uh, Mr. Luby, I'd be inclined to uh, grant the variance if we knew that the folks behind you on 474 had no objection. And um, they... Let's see. I guess that's a swimming pool? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm hmm And then they have some other road entrance, right? I don't know what it, what it would be called. That's right up against my property line in back there. It's an entrance, you say, to their place? Correct. 
Hmm. Going in the back. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's literally against the property line. Right. It looks like a gravel road, maybe, or shell. Concrete. It is paved. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Anything else? I know Mr. Brookta has a question. Anything else, Brian? I'm done. Mr. Brookta. Uh, Ronald, uh, I would feel comfortable uh, granting this if you had a letter from your homeowners association. Um, I would like to kind of postpone this until next month and see a letter from the homeowners that uh, they have. Whatever would put your minds at ease, I'm, I'm willing to go agree to the postponement to okay. try to get the letter from the neighbor and the HOA. So you're willing to postpone to get the, uh, get the letter? Yes. Okay, let's. Right, do we have a motion to postpone? So made. Second. We have a second. Would everyone please vote with the lights? So, Mr. Snyder, you, you made the motion, Mr. Brook, to your second or opposite? No, Mr. Brook made the motion. Okay. Mr. Snyder, second to postpone. Do you want these pictures back or you want to? Keep? Please, so that way I have it for when Can I come back. Can we keep back. these two letters from the neighbors? Yes. We'll put this part of file, but uh, well, I can leave. I can leave those pictures too because I have them on a scan card. Okay, if you can, that'd be great. We'll have it next time when, when you go. Yes, sir. Motion carries. I will see you next month. Thank you. Uh, December third at three. Yes. yes. Yeah, we'll send you a notice. All right. Thank you. Our next case is BOA case number two zero one nine one six seven five BOA. Request by applicant in an A4 single family residential zoning district to reduce the required yard, side yard setback from five feet to three feet to allow for the construction of a boathouse. The property is located at 14197 River Lake Drive, Covington, Louisiana. The applicant is Perry Rachel. The, the request by applicant to reduce the required side yard setback from five feet to three feet to allow for the construction of a boathouse. Boathouse. Staff comments, please. The variance is being requested to allow for the construction of a 576 square foot boathouse. Although the boathouse does not exceed the maximum allowable square footage, staff is not in favor of the request considering that no hardship or practical difficulty is being demonstrated to support uh, the encroachment. Moreover, the property does not have any unique physical characteristic make it in impossible to meet the setbacks. See the applicant, Brett. Would you please state your name and address for the records, please? Barry Rachel, 13548 River Lake Drive. Mr. Rachel, do you have anything further to add? Yes, I do. Uh, I bought my lot in uh, August of 19 in, in uh, Lake Ramsey, and it was advertised as having the dock pilings, the boathouse pilings, and the plans approved by uh, Lake Ramsey Homeowners Association. So I did some research, and it was, and I bought the lot. And in May of 2019, I was getting ready to build a house on it. So I said, you know, it's been a while. I'm going to submit my house to the uh, Homeowners Association, and I'm going to submit the boathouse again. So it was approved twice by the Homeowners Association. So I got the permit for my house, no problem. When I went to get the permit for my boathouse, I'm really asking for 20 inches, okay? It's the pollen from the side from my property line is three foot four and they want five. But this is the gray area, okay? My property line ends on the bulkhead, okay? So Lake, Ramsey tell, Lake, Lake Ramsey's Homeowners Association tells me that you don't own, you have no ownership in the lake. They had the ownership of the whole lake, the, uh, the uh, HOA, okay? But on the other side of the lake, okay, it's in phase four, their property runs out 10 feet into the lake. So I can see where their setbacks would run in the lake where the setbacks are, because their property runs into the lake. Mine stops on the ball kit. So, um, I've got two letters from each adjacent person 
on each side of me says they have no problem whatsoever with me putting the bulkhead. I mean, the pollens have been there for two years. And um, I, um, I'm asking for the, for the variance because everything is, when, it, when the guy did the pollens, he laid everything out from the boathouse to the left. So, I mean, for 20 inches, I, and those pollens have been in there for two years. I'd have to break them off and redrive them, you know. And it, it, it would be a financial hardship only to pull that up if I wanted to get a boathouse. And that's one of the reasons I moved out to Lake Ramsey. But it's been approved twice by, by Lake Ramsey Homeowners Association. And I got letters from both neighbors. And really, like I said, y'all have the survey. It says on the, pro on the end of the property line in the back, it says bulkhead. Where the bulkhead is, it says your property line ends here. So I don't see the setbacks going into the, into the lake. On one side of the, like I said, on one phase in Lake Ramsey, their property does go in the lake and their setbacks carry into the lake. Now I asked the parish for a plot of Lake Ramsey where uh, they tell you all the setbacks or restrictions and I haven't, I haven't seen one yet, so that's that's where I stand at now. Mr. Snyder. Uh, yes, sir, uh, Mr. Rachel. Uh, based on the fact that you have letters from your neighbors and the HOA, and I see that lots 27, 26, 25, 24, and 22 are all in violation of the setback. I make a motion to approve. I second. We have a motion and a second to approve. Do we have any discussion or questions? Hearing none, would everyone please vote with the lights? Motion carries. Well, I get a letter or? You, you'll, get, you'll get a letter within the next week. No, it's not going to be within the next week, but you can file for your building permit, and I'll oh, okay. sign off on it, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Our last case today is BOA case number 20191680, BOA, request by applicant for after-the-fact variance to waive the required 50-foot no-cut buffer on the north side and reduce the required 50-foot no-cut buffer on the south side of the property. The property is located at 75310 Highway 1077, Covington, Louisiana. The applicant is Mr. Ryan and Mrs. Jessica Brown. The representative is Mr. Jeff Shane. Request by applicant for after the fact variance to waive the 50 foot no cut buffer on the north side and reduce the required 50 foot no cut buffer on the south side of the property. Staff comments, please. The first request is to allow for the newly constructed driveway and ditch to remain within the north and required no-cut buffer. The driveway is necessary to provide a separate and independent access to the existing residence. Note that before the creation of parcel A2, the residence was previously accessed from the gravel drive that you can see on the attached survey coming from the south, which is now owned by a different entity. Also, as required, the owner procured a culvert permit from uh, DOTD in connection with the new driveway. The second request is to allow for the after the fact clearing of a portion of the southern buffer for the construction of an earth berm. The purpose of the earth berm is to divert the water which used to sheet flow from north to south and directing it into the ditch along the eastern boundary of Highway 1077. Staff is not opposed to the request since it will improve the drainage of the site. Staff is, not, staff is not opposed to both of the requested variances. However, since the requested variance regarding, regarding the location of the driveway does not include a request for the driveway to encroach over the property line, the new driveway will have to be entirely relocated on the property in question. Mr. Shane, would you please state your name again and your yes, address? Sir. Thank you. Uh, Jeff Shane of the Jones Fussell Law Firm at P.O. Box 1810 in Covington. Uh, I represent the owner and applicant, Mr. and Mrs. Ryan Brown. Uh, Mr. Brown is with me this evening. Um, we appreciate staff's comments and suggestions that they are not in opposition to the variances requested. Um, the only comment that I'd like to make 
Uh, if you will look at the drawing provided to you that shows the driveway on it, on parcel A2, um, I assume that's in your packet. Um, as I appreciated, staff would like uh, that portion of the driveway that extends beyond, uh, I guess that's really more like the northeasterly boundary. You see how the driveway goes just beyond the line a little bit? Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to suggest that we think a grant of servitude by that property owner would be adequate. Uh, that parcel uh, where the drive extends beyond the boundary is in a subdivision. Uh, it's Spring Lakes. It's phase three. It goes before the Planning Commission this evening for preliminary subdivision approval. And we have included a servitude over that area on the preliminary subdivision plat that the Planning Commission will consider such that there will be a legal right. This is about a six foot encroachment of the driveway. Needless to say, when it was built, we did not realize that it extended beyond the property line. So what we'd like to do is leave the driveway where it is uh, and let that six foot encroachment be covered by the servitude that will be on the plat for Spring Lakes phase three, which again is a preliminary subdivision case that comes before um, the Planning Commission this evening, and I might add staff has recommended uh, approval of preliminary subdivision approval for phase three. I got a question of legal. Can we give the right to, to go on someone else's property before he gets the uh, access servitude? I mean, I don't think- We, we would be happy to make this variance contingent upon the procurement and approval of that servitude so that there would not be a chicken in the egg. We like that, okay, as long as you put it like that, because I didn't know if we had uh, the power and authority to do yes, it or well, something like no, that. We, we understand that if for some reason, and if it doesn't happen, we'll either get a conventional servitude granted or perhaps we'll have to change the, we'll have to adjust the boundary line. I mean, we certainly respect staff's comment and understand why the road needs to be on property either owned by the Browns or property that is subject to servitude in their favor. So. Mr. Snyder. Uh, yes, Jeff, uh, looking at the uh, survey here and the request said to reduce the 50 foot buffer on the south side, but it doesn't say how much. Well, if you'd look, well. <laughs> This is all wooded here. Right. Just here. Oh, I thought they wanted to reduce this entire no, buffer. It doesn't the explain. Area, right? Just with the berm. Yeah. Just where the berm okay. is. I got it. Not Otherwise, the, whole, the not 50 the foot buffer. buffer would be maintained. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, it, so we're all in agreement that th th we can have a contingency based on. Um, he, they're getting the, the approval. That yeah. Legal, that's. Okay. I mean, if he doesn't, then he has to move the drive, or it has to either move the driveway or get some type of servitude. If there's not a servitude for the driveway area, either through the subdivision, there'll be a servitude granted by the owner of that property, which is Lonesome Development LLC, or alternatively, there will be some conveyance of property, which I think would require a lot line adjustment between the two tracks, meaning that we would have to submit uh, a survey to staff uh, for a lot line adjustment if we're going to do a change of ownership. But we understand that one of those three things have to happen. Mm -hmm. you got it. Yeah, yeah well, well, based on if one of those three things does happen and is stipulated uh, as such, then uh, I'll make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't see the, I'm sorry, excuse me, Jen. Uh, oh, before, before we vote, I, I, I apologize, I didn't see someone in the audience that may want to rebut this. So uh, would I ask you to please resend your motion to we have the gentleman to speak? Yeah, I'll, I'll pull that motion for now. And you pull your second? Yeah. I, I apologize for that, sorry, I didn't see you sitting back there, I'm sorry. Would you just please state your name and address? Uh, my name is uh, Michael Champagne. 
I live at 146 Northridge Drive, which is just north of these properties under consideration. Uh, first of all, had it not been for the due diligence of the residents of the 1077 corridor to bring the problems associated with these driveways, berms, et cetera, to light of the planning commission, this would have all been done with no approval and we wouldn't even be talking here today. Everything that was done here was done without permits. The planning people had to issue a cease and desist to stop some of the work that was going on. What you have to understand is this property is in a very sensitive area as it relates to floodwaters and stormwater runoff. The 2016 floods inundated that area. So, so now, when you look at these properties, this property, you've got a new driveway, which is probably two feet taller than the, or the existing elevation of that land. You've got a berm going through the area that they've cut the, uh, the, through the buffer. You've got, and I'm, I'm confused by the uh, narrative in here about the, the old driveway. The old driveway, how, how, many, how many properties are at 75, 310? Why are there, so is there gonna be a new? Unless he, if he asks us to come up, we'll be glad to be yeah, I'll, I'll give you time to rebut that. Just, I'm just sorry. Answer. What? I, I'll ask him to rebut anything, but go ahead. Right. Answer. Because the, uh, the berm and the uh, clearing of the buffer extends beyond the original driveway to the south. In front, it, all of this is, runs in front of Spring Lakes, which... You know, the people in our area have just a built-in suspicion about those berms and things that affect the, the water runoff. And as far as what the staff said about the berms, the berms make it better for the water to leave the property by putting it in the Highway 1077 ditch. The Highway 1077 ditch can't handle any more water. So we're gonna force more water into the Highway 1077 ditch. And the, the, according to the DOTD, the premise for the, the new culvert was based on taking the old culvert out. And it's still, the old culvert is still there. So, uh, you know, it's really, uh, you know, the notice in the paper was really incomplete as to what was going to be discussed here. And um, the, uh, well, I've got a couple of uh, other items. Right. And the, or, the original driveway at 75 310, that berm crosses that driveway. So that driveway now is like driving over a railroad track. It's about two feet taller at that point than it was before. And um, let's see if I have anything else. Any, any, any approval of what we're looking at here, and I doubt seriously that any of you, and I'm not saying this critically, but just in your capacity, you haven't been out there to look at these berms, to look at this new driveway, and to see what impact it could have on stormwater and floodwater runoff in that area. Uh, I really think that any 
any approvals as far as the buffer is concerned, there's a berm going through the buffer. And there was no berm in there when the trees were there. It was at whatever elevation existed at the time. That should all be restored to what it was before. And this driveway, I mean, it's, it's like a dam that's going to prevent water from going from north to south. And that's really the way the water drains in that area, north to south. So uh, I just uh, feel like there are some, there are some elements of, these, of this proposal and this adjustment that need to be studied further before you make any approval uh, to, uh, for these changes. Thank you very much. Uh, question for staff, has uh, the department looked at drainage issues involved in this request? Yes, the engineering department is working in, uh, you know, with the owner. And I'm sure Mr. Shane can confirm that as well. Sure. Mr. Shane. May I? Yes. Um, I, I was going to, I didn't know Mr. Champagne was here. I don't know Mr. Champagne. Yeah, you do. Uh, <laughs> I've met you more than once. Well, let me say that I didn't recognize you, oh, and because you did not come up and greet me this evening or tell me that you wanted to discuss something about this case, that's the only point I'm making. But um, I've got some real good facts for you that probably, in fairness to Mr. Champagne, he's not aware of. Um, there, the construction of the driveway and the construction of the berm were unauthorized in the sense that my client of ignorance did not get a clearing permit and a site work permit to do those things. As a result of calls from someone in Spring Lakes subdivision, the parish investigated many months ago and issued a cease and desist. As a result of that, there have been numerous site visits, some of which I have been a part of, that include not only Richard C. Lambert and Associates, the private engineer, but also the engineering and public works department for the parish. Uh, I will say that this study of this issue has been under the direct supervision of Sidney Fontenot, the director of the department. And as a result of a series of meetings, Mr. Fontenot directed my client to take the following action in order to cure the lack of procuring permits. One of the actions that was specified was to seek an after-the-fact permit from the Board of Adjustment in light of the construction of the driveway and of the berm as shown on the drawing. I think that of all the things that I've heard Mr. Champagne say probably the thing that I would significantly disagree with him on is that it was the conclusion of not only our engineer, Mr. Lambert, but the absolute conclusion of the parish engineering department that the water needs to go into the 1077 ditch and that if it were not directed to do so, the water would continue to sheet flow and could possibly create harm to Spring Lake subdivision. That's why the berm was constructed. The story goes actually a step further. When I discussed with you earlier the slight encroachment of the road into Spring Lake subdivision phase three, which goes before the Planning Commission this evening in 45 minutes, that preliminary subdivision approval also addresses the same issues as it relates to Spring Lakes Phase 3, because the berm continues through it. Staff has recommended approval <coughs> of the grant of preliminary subdivision for Spring Lakes Phase 3, which includes a continuation of the berm. Uh, I would also suggest to you that because this is an after-the-fact permit, the fee or the, the, the filing fee for this variance is $500, which is the price you pay if you do not uh, get permission first. 
and obviously seek forgiveness of sorts and get this permission after the fact. But I guess the bottom line is, is that I don't want there to be any suggestion, at least from our perspective and in the meetings that I have personally been a part of with the parish, that the parish engineering or public works department believes that this driveway or this berm creates a drainage problem. If so, you wouldn't have a staff report recommending a no opposition to the variance request. And likewise, you would not, the, par the planning commission would not have a staff report tonight as it relates to preliminary subdivision approval that recommends approval. Um, hopefully that gives you some more information. Um, and uh, if you have further questions, I'd be glad to address. Yeah, I have one question. The water, does it come from the north flowing down to 1077? Well, 1077 is, is, is yes. It's sort of on the... the well, the, it's not quite north. The, the it's, it's more it's, the westerly yeah, side. More, more, yeah, it's not quite... Yeah. 1077 is not due north and south, yeah. but the idea is, is that the water flows really in a southwesterly direction, which would catch the easterly side of Highway 1077, that ditch. And the purpose of this elevated drive or whatever and the berm, not to hurt anybody, but to catch the water, channel it, and divert it into the 1077 ditch. I should further add that the parish is studying now the things it needs to do in conjunction with the state as it relates to making sure the water in the 1077 ditch is properly handled and disposed of. So we recognize that just getting it into a ditch may not be a total solution. But I can assure you that this matter has probably been under study for, I would think, a good three months. I, I think this started in August or September, yes. July or August. Yeah, unfortunately. J July, August. So I mean, my point is, is that there was considerable study before the parish made a the administration made a determination as to what steps should be taken. We were told how to address it in our Spring Lake Phase Three preliminary subdivision application, and it was suggested that as it related to Mr. Brown's parcel, that he seek an after-the-fact variances from the Board of Adjustment as it relates to the items that are before you. Uh, Jeff, one question: um, Has the parish been maintaining the 1077 ditch? Uh, no, sir. That's technically. Uh, I realize that, no, but the parish does maintain ditches on state highways right. in some I was, locations. I was only, as I was getting ready to answer you, I heard Mr. Champagne speaking. Uh, that is a state right of way. It is traditionally maintained by the state. But in point of fact, Councilman Thompson, who has jurisdiction in that area, has in fact cleaned out portions of in fact, the east side of the 1077 right-of-way, from Tantilla Road south, that area was cleaned out by Public Works, I'm going to say within the last 12 to 18 months. I may be a little off on the timeline, but not much, because that was an effort made to facilitate getting the water further downstream sure. so that it wouldn't hit the 1077 ditch and not flow for fear that it might back up. Right. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Mr. Champagne, do you want to add anything else? Uh, yes. Um, first of all, from Northridge Estates south to uh, Spring Lakes, there's been no cleaning of that ditch, of the 1077 ditch. It is chock full of trash. At the same time, there's a double culvert that goes across the highway to the west side of 1077, which was put there years ago after Mr. Acock stopped the drainage in 1077, forced the state to put these culverts across to the west side to go south. The west side has not been cleaned in quite some time. And to just take one thing out of what Mr. Shane just said, was the berms were put there to keep the water out of Spring Lakes. Now, 
that's really telling. The water should not have to be just kept out of Spring Lakes to save the subdivision. I mean, it flooded before. That water should, should just keep going where it was destined by God to go, and that's all I have to say. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we? No, well, we're doing a motion. was pulled back. We're saying that we've got to be. Um, do I hear a motion from anyone? I just, uh, Mr. Snyder. Yeah, I understand the difficulty here that really comes down to drainage rather than no cut buffers and things like that. And um, I also understand that when we have certain amounts of rainfall in short periods of time, uh, most of us flood. And uh, I think that the parish engineering department, if they've looked at this and they've determined that the water needs to go to the 1077 ditch and the 1077 ditch needs to be maintained, whether it's been currently maintained or not, I couldn't say, but Mr. Shane says it has been within the last year and a half, uh, uh, hopefully all the way to where that water needs to go. Um, and, and based on uh, what I've learned about this case, I make the same motion to approve. We have a motion to approve and a second. Do we have any discussion or questions? Would everyone please vote with your lights? Motion carries. That takes care of the... Uh, our cases today, old business. Six cases for next month plus the two postponed. So how many cases? Six cases for next month plus the two postponed. So that'll be for the new business. Yep. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor, aye.